Okay. Um, just, you know, to be mindful of time as we hit the top of the hour, I know some folks will be rolling in here in the next minute or so. Uh, so everything that I'm saying, I'm going to throw into the chat as well. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so happy to have you here to hear from our experts, our panelists about their institutions. Uh, a few things to note before we get started. If you are attending this uh, live, your camera and your microphone are off so our panelists cannot hear or see you. If you would like to ask a question during this 45 minute session, you need to hit the Q&A that's either at the top or bottom of your screen and they'll be able to answer you throughout this 45 minute session. Again, the only way to speak to our panelists, our experts here during this 45 minute session is by hitting that Q&A at the top or bottom of your screen. Uh, this is the last session for tonight, but there will certainly be more in the future, and that's at StriveScan's website. A recording of this and all of the different sessions will be available at StriveScan's website, and I'll make sure I put the link in there uh, in that chat for you. Please pay special attention to that chat. Uh, our experts, our panelists will be throwing in very important information, in particular, their contact information. Uh, with that said, we are going to get things started with Portland State University. Thank you so much, Christy. Let me share my screen real quick here. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dave Kobzina, and I am the Assistant Director for Transfer Recruitment at Portland State University. Uh, thinking of, of students who live in the WACAC region, I work directly with students from Northern California, um, also from Utah, and then a number of community colleges here in Oregon. So before I get started with my presentation, I want to uh, first explain that our university is the only urban institution in the state of Oregon. Uh, we are located about eight miles, or excuse me, about, about uh, 10 blocks south of Pioneer Square, which is what's considered Portland's living room. Uh, so kind of in the southwest part of, of the city, uh, you know, very much the university district. We're on about 50 acres, so not very big. One of the things, though, to note is that we don't have any set boundaries. So while we have a strong sense of a campus community, you've got a whole lot more in the city in which to explore uh, as well. Now we have around 26,000 students altogether. Uh, we are the second largest university in Oregon, and that includes about 21,000 undergraduates. Uh, we are the state's most diverse four-year institution. Just under 50% of our student body identifies as coming from a racially or ethnically diverse background. You can see that 37% of our students identify as first generation, but it's also diverse when we speak about our students' social, religious, political, cultural, economic backgrounds. Really everything that you as an individual brings to the table makes us a much more diverse campus as a collective whole. The picture you're seeing on the screen right now, this is of our park blocks, which run right through the middle of campus, so a big grassy area where students tend to hang out quite a bit. We have great public transportation as pictured in the, in the shot as well. That is our streetcar. It's one of our two light rail lines along with the MAX, and we also have our bus system. Uh, you're welcome to bring a car to campus. I don't recommend it necessarily because a full-time parking permit is about $1,000 per year. For a year, excuse me, we have what's called the Viking Pass. That's about $450 for the entire year. Um, very, very easy to get around, like I said, with public transit or with a bicycle. So uh, we have more than 200 different clubs and organizations on campus, very civic minded, a lot in the way of community service, student government, sustainability initiatives, on campus housing. Yes, there are 10 residence halls. It is guaranteed for first year students, but it is not required. If you live with us for the first year, you can be on campus for all four years. Uh, sports, we are division one school in the Big Sky Conference for everything except softball which is part of the Pacific Coast Conference. Now, the motto of Portland State is let knowledge serve the city. I bring this up because in order to graduate from PSU, you're required to do an internship or a community-based project. Many students, though, will do both. So it is all about the hands-on learning. You can see some of the top employers for PSU graduates. Uh, the, um, the Portland itself, excuse me, is known as the Silicon Forest. It's a corny play on words in the Silicon Valley. Um, Intel is the state's largest private employer with more than 10,000 people working there, about 1,000 of which are PSU alums. Now, academically, we have about 200 programs that you can choose from all housed in the different schools and colleges on your screen. Some of the bigger majors are going to be in business and engineering, along with psychology, graphic design, and the health sciences. 
We're the only public school here in Oregon to offer both a bachelor's and a master's degree in social work. Uh, while we do not require that you come in with a declared major, that is not man mandated until after your sophomore year, we do require that you have an advising pathway. There are seven of these where we group similar majors together to ensure that you have an, ass you have an assigned academic advisor who is going to be best suited to help you figure out, you know, what is the, the correct program for you, but also with course planning, career planning, so it's more of a holistic approach to your overall education. Lastly, I'll mention that we do not have any impacted programs, so your ability to graduate in four years is very doable. Now, admission requirements for first year students, pretty straightforward. We're looking for you to have at least a 2.5 cumulative unweighted GPA. This has been lowered from our typical 3.0 GPA because to align with the, the COVID pandemic and understanding the students' academics, many students, excuse me, academic struggles over the past 18 months, we want to be cognizant of that. Average though is about a 3.4. And then we have our subject areas, all of which need to be met with a C minus or better. They're listed on your screen here. If you meet the GPA and the subjects, you're going to be admissible to Portland State. We are a test optional school. We have been for many years, so nothing has changed because of COVID. Our application is specifically through Portland State itself. Um, we operate on a rolling admissions basis, but we still encourage everybody to apply in the fall, if at all possible. Now, cost of attendance, we want to focus on the two right-hand uh, columns. First, normally out-of-state tuition is about $29,000 per year, but we are a member of WUI, the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. If you receive that, it is going to be about $14,700 per year, bringing your total cost of attendance to around uh, $31,000. Now, how do you qualify for WUI? You need one of three things, a 3.0 cumulative unweighted GPA, 1270 SAT, or a 27 composite on the ACT. So long as you have one of those three, you're going to have WUI for all four years. There are no major restrictions to it. We do not cap the number of students who receive it. You must apply, though, by June 15th in order to be eligible. If you do not meet the criteria for WUI, we also have the Out-of-State Opportunity Scholarship, which is good for up to $6,000 per year. There are, of course, other scholarships you can be applying for, financial aid, out-of-pocket. It's really pulling all of your resources together that's going to help you pay for school at the end of the day. Now, if you have questions after this evening, I would love to connect with you at some point. Feel free to email me, call me. Um, I'm also happy to schedule an appointment, uh, this, depending if I'm in your area at some point, uh, please let me know. I'll put all my information into the chat in just a bit. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Christy to get us on with our next session. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Next up, we have University of Portland. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm with the University of Portland. I purposely asked that I follow up with David at PSU uh, just so students can get a very clear understanding of the differences between PSU and UP. As you all know, this is all about finding a good fit and no school is everything to everyone. Uh, Portland State offers a very wonderful uh, set of opportunities. University of Portland does too, but we are very vastly different schools. If you could, please uh, scan the QR code and register for this event at the University of Portland and get on our mailing list. My name is Martin Williams. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at the University of Portland. I am also the Bay Area representative. I am a former Californian, so I know what it's all about to transition out of the California South Side uh, all the way up to Portland, Oregon. I use the pronouns he, him, and his. There is my email address, mwilliams at up.edu. So uh, by contrast to Portland State, University of Portland is a small Catholic liberal arts teaching university. We often get confused with being a Jesuit institution like Santa Clara, Loyola Marymount, Gonzaga. We are actually associated with the Congregation of Holy Cross Priests. These are the same guys that run Notre Dame out in Indiana. So think of us as the younger, more attractive sister of Notre Dame. And what the Holy Crossers believe in is the quintessential liberal arts education, education ed, educating the head, the heart, and the hands. Relatively small, 3,800 undergraduate students. And what that will relate to is a much more personalized experience than you might find in a larger institution. We are a teaching university, so all of our classes are taught by professors. So we offer no TAs, no grad assistance in any of the lecture courses. In addition to that, every student does have an advisor help he or she map out 
uh, his or her education, ensuring that the student graduates in four years, but also ensuring that the student is getting the most out of their education. Every student does receive an advisor, which an advisor can help students ascertain professional experiences. As David had mentioned at PSU, Portland, Oregon is an extremely robust city. And the University of Portland, just like PSU, takes advantage of this to great lengths in providing our students with internships, research experiences, field placements, clinicals, so on and so forth. And studies have shown that students who have these experiences before they graduate are much more competitive in the workforce or graduate school applications. We offer five different colleges at the University of Portland. The College of Arts and Sciences is the bread and butter of the university, offering a wide array of majors within the sciences, the humanities, as well as the social sciences. We do offer minors in all of those degrees, but we also have additional minors in other subjects like constitutional studies, gender and women's studies, social justice, so on and so forth. The University of Portland offers four nationally accredited professional programs, School of Business Administration, School of Education, School of Engineering, and School of Nursing. And these programs do require the professional experiences. So internships for business students, as well as engineering students, over 1,100 hours of experience inside the classroom for education majors, and of course, clinicals for our direct entry school of nursing. This picture right here encapsulates why so many students from out of state choose to come to Portland, Oregon. Uh, the other vast difference between us and Portland State is that we are not quite as urban as they are. We have to offer 150 acres on the north side of town and we are on the east bank of the Willamette River. So we're very isolated on the north side of town. So our students uh, don't have to worry about dodging traffic or people meandering through our campus to get from one part of town to another part of town. We are very much a residential campus. We do require our first year students to live on campus. And 80% of our students are coming from out of state. California is in fact our number one state of, uh, amongst students. Uh, as I mentioned, we do require students to live on campus. And if you wanted to, you could live on campus all four years. The very, there's a very strong sense of community here at the University of Portland. We don't have fraternities, we don't have sororities. Our students really embrace that Oregon philosophy of just being a little bit more chilled out. Applying to UP, you can use our application or you can use the common application. I do recommend the common app. You're using it for other schools. No reason to do extra work uh, just for the University of Portland. You can apply as late as January 15th, but we do recommend the early priority deadline of November 15th. That is on par with a lot of our peer institutions with early application. There are some very clear advantages in applying early. Number one, no application fee. So all you have to do is put University of Portland invited me to apply with a fee waiver. Uh, first come, first serve. So students who apply in the fall are more likely to get in than those who apply in the winter, especially our more competitive programs in nursing and other STEM areas. Early response. So we will start reviewing applications as soon as they're turned in. Students can hear back from us within about a couple of weeks after completing their application, but they still have the luxury of waiting until May 1 to discern if University of Portland is the right place for them. Uh, in addition to that, early uh, uh, scholarship notification and early applications for financial aid. Uh, please keep tabs uh, on us with the, our social media. We're absolutely killing it with Instagram and with TikTok. With that, I will pass it on to Courtney from Southern Oregon University. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Martin. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my screen share going here. 
All right, get rid of some of these things here. All right, so my name is Courtney Weaver and I'm an admissions counselor at Southern Oregon University. Uh, Southern Oregon University is located in Ashland, Oregon. Uh, again, thank you all for being here tonight. I'm excited to chat with you about SOU and all the amazing things that it has to offer. So first of all, uh, just to give you some information about SOU, we are a public four-year liberal arts institution located in Southern Oregon. Our total enrollment right now is at 4,900 students, and that's for online transfer uh, freshman students. That's our entire student body. Our student to faculty ratio right now is at 19 to 1. And so what that means is that you're going to have small class sizes at SOU, which is really great. We have a beautiful 175-acre campus located in the sprawling hills of Ashland. Our average admitted GPA for students is a 3.3. And then as far as majors are concerned, we have 40 majors with over 100 plus areas of study that I'll touch on here in just a little bit. We have four residence halls plus apartments and family housings for and a family housing for our students to take advantage of. We are a member of the NAIA and we have 13 men's and women's varsity sports, including football, soccer, basketball, volleyball, softball. Our women's softball team was actually national champs this past year, so that's fantastic. And then as far as clubs and organizations are concerned, we have over 100 clubs and organizations for our students to take advantage of. We do not have Greek life, but we have a very strong community on our campus. Uh, SOU is located in Ashland, Oregon. And so for those of you that aren't familiar, Ashland is about 14 miles away from the California border. And so um, Ashland itself has approximately 25,000 residents, but it's part of the larger Rogue Valley, uh, which has about 215,000 residents. If you've heard of Ashland or if you visited us, it might be for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, which draws in a lot of visitors every year. Um, and if you're kind of trying to figure out where we're at, and to give you an idea, we're about four and a half hours from Sacramento and about four and a half hours from Portland. So I'm um, just kind of right in the middle of those two larger areas. Uh, if you're looking for an international airport, you can find one in Medford, which is just 15 minutes away from Ashland. And then Ashland is known for everything that you can do outdoors. Um, if you like hiking, biking, skiing, camping, uh, snowboarding, uh, anything at all to do outdoors, um, you can do it in Ashland or in the Rogue Valley, which is fantastic. As far as weather is concerned in Ashland and at SOU, you're looking at a summer high of about 83 and a winter high of 50. And folks are always wondering, you know, how much rain do you get compared to Portland? Um, so we get about 22 inches of rain, whereas Portland averages about 43. So we get significantly less rainfall um, than the Portland area. Uh, and in that picture there, you can see Mount Ashland, which is where our folks love to go skiing in the wintertime. As far as majors are concerned, we have, like I said, 40 majors with over 100 plus areas of study. Uh, some of our most popular majors include business. That's our number one program. Uh, it has concentrations in accounting, tourism management, management and marketing. Our computer uh, science program is fantastic. Our criminal justice program is also really great. Our folks get to visit uh, Max, uh, Max Penitentiary, oh, excuse me, um, with that program, which is really cool in California. And then our education studies program is another one I definitely want to highlight. Um, you can get your license uh, through that program, which is amazing. Our psychology program is a top two program at our, at our school. And then our theater program, we partner with the Oregon Shakespeare Festival uh, to help have our theater program. Our students get internships with the festival. Uh, the festival folks come in and teach the classes for our theater program. So we have an amazing theater program. It actually requires a separate application. Uh, but if you have questions about that program, feel free to let me know. And then as far as housing is concerned, we do have a live on requirement for our first year students. So first year students are required to live on campus. And then after that, you're able to move off campus if you'd like to. Uh, we have four residence halls, which you can kind of see in the video there, a couple of them. Those are Shasta and McLaughlin, which is where our first year students uh, mainly live. And so those are brand new facilities with state of the art rooms and suites um, that are just absolutely fantastic. We also have, like I said before, student apartments and family housing for students who are maybe um, upperclassmen or transfer or non-traditional students. Um, and family housing goes all the way up to a four bedroom, which is really great. We have a brand new dining hall with six made to order stations, plus lots of other cafes and shops to eat on our campus. And our student recreation center, which is in the bottom two photos there, you can see is a brand new facility built within the last five years. Um, it has, you know, the basketball courts, the indoor track, over 75 new weightlifting machines, a 44 foot rock wall. Um, so lots to do in our student rec center. 
And then as far as costs are, consumer, are concerned, we are a WUI school. So uh, WUI is automatically granted to all California and uh, Nevada students who are granted admission at SOU. So there's not a separate application. There's not any GPA requirements associated with our WUI. So as long as you apply and are a resident of those two states and get admitted, um, you'll automatically get WUI. So our WUI tuition for this upcoming year is 15664 and that's for a full year of tuition and fees. Um, and so on top of that, of course, you're eligible for scholarships. We offer merit scholarships that go all the way up to, up to $3,500. We have an honors college program, which is fantastic. And that gives you an extra additional $2,000 on top of any merit. And then of course we have various other scholarships available throughout the year. And just so you know, our average financial aid award is $14,000. And then to wrap up, if you're looking to apply to SOU, our priority date is February 1st. I'm just gonna turn my alarm off before it goes off. <laughs> our priority date is February 1st. So um, that's the date for all of our merit scholarships. Um, so if you go to apply.sou.edu, you can submit your application and then send us your transcripts. And once we have your application and your transcripts, we typically get a turnaround to you in about two to three weeks. Uh, we have rolling admissions at SOU, so there is no deadline to apply. Um, also keep in mind that we are test optional, so you don't have to have those test scores in order to apply to SOU. And then if you're looking for more information, feel free to check out our virtual tour or our virtual presentations that we have going on. Um, you can go to sou.edu slash admissions slash virtual. Um, you can snap a picture of the QR code there to get more information. Or of course, my information is in the lower left there. Um, feel free to email me or shoot me a phone or give me a phone call. And right. that's it for me. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, next up, we have University of Oregon. Good evening, everyone. Let me get my screen shared. My name is Loretta Klosterman, and I am one of the regional admissions counselors for the University of Oregon. So I have a very unique position where I live right here in California, but I recruit for the U of O, so I get the best of both worlds. The U of O is a public liberal arts research institution located in the city of Eugene. We are two hours south of Portland and about three and a half hours away from the California border. Like many of my colleagues have mentioned outdoor recreation, we have tons of outdoor recreation, just, you know, just like anywhere here in the Pacific Northwest. But we're also equidistant between the Cascade Mountains and the Oregon coastline. So our students do take full advantage of the ability to go to the beach, as well as the ability to go snowboarding and skiing in the winter months. Eugene really is that quintessential college town environment, but being that we're on the same freeway as major cities such as San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle, we do get some incredible music events, art exhibits, comedy shows, cultural events, even Broadway musicals that all come through Eugene. So our students have this great access of being in a wonderful college town environment, but also have the ability to access of what a larger city can offer as well too. The university itself is just about 19,000 undergraduate students, which does classify us as a mid-sized institution. For our students, being a mid-sized institution means that you get the best of both worlds. For our students seeking that larger school atmosphere, they can explore 168 academic programs, participate in groundbreaking research, study abroad, and have access to Division I athletics. But for our students who are wanting that smaller school environment, we place a strong Strong emphasis on a small classroom atmosphere with the median class size just being about 20 students across the entire university. We are a tier one research institution. We are also a member of the AAU, the Association of American Universities, and we are one of two institutions in the Pacific Northwest to be a member of the AAU. And as a member, we are being recognized in excellence for academic research as well as education. We're in great accompaniment with other universities such as UC Berkeley, UC Davis, and Harvard and Yale. So we do take a very strong sense of pride that we have been invited to be a part of such a prestigious organization. Whoops, I just skipped to the end of the presentation. My apologies here. So let's go back there. Um, these are some of our top majors on campus. As I mentioned before, we do have 168 academic programs. So if you are sitting here and you're like, I have no idea what I want to study, that is perfectly fine by us. We do recognize that when you get to college, you're going to be exposed to a lot of different academic areas. So that means taking that first year or two years to kind of 
dip your toes and find out what you like and what you don't like, you have the opportunity to do so without getting behind in a four-year graduation plan. In fact, our most common major for incoming first-year students is undecided, which is also what we like to call exploring. With the opening of its new building this past fall, the Phil and Penny Knight Campus for Accelerated Scientific Impact has brought new academic majors to the U of O, including a new major in neuroscience, data science, and a minor in bioengineering. And bioengineering is on track to be a full major in the future. There is no doubt that the U of O has tons of campus spirit and campus community. With over 300 student clubs and organizations, it really shows you that our students are connected and invested within our campus life and our campus culture. We are also home to Division I athletics and compete in the Pac-12 Athletic Conference. We are known for sports such as football and basketball, but we are most famously known for track and field. Fun fact, Eugene's nickname is Tracktown USA. That tight-knit community is definitely attributed to our housing requirement. We do require all of our first-year students to live on campus. We really want you to establish that strong sense of community right from the get-go. And talking about the application process, for those of you who are seniors, our application is open and you can apply at any time. We do utilize the Common Application, the Coalition Application, and the Oregon app, which is on our website. Students are evaluated through a holistic approach. One thing I will note about our application process is that we do not accept transcripts for the application. Students will self-report all of their high school coursework and grades directly on the application. So I always recommend having an unofficial high school transcript with you when you are filling out the application just to use as a reference guide. We, these are the deadlines to be aware of. We do have our November 1st deadline, which is early action. Students who apply by November 1 will hear an admissions decision no later than December 15th. And early action is a non-binding acceptance. So if you are admitted, we are simply an option for you, but you're not obligated to enroll. And then our regular decision deadline is February 15th. We do not give preference over deadlines, so just pick the deadline that best fits you. We review each applicant the same. And then our merit scholarship deadline is February 15th. So let's say you apply in December and you get your senior year first semester grades back and now you qualify for a merit-based scholarship. As long as you provide us with those updated grades by February 15th, we would still qualify you for that merit-based scholarship. UO is a permanently test optional institution. We always plan to go test optional in 2020. And that's always that's because we have been transparent that test scores never was a deciding factor and whether we said yes or no to a student. When I say optional, I truly mean optional. No student would be faulted for not submitting test scores. And test scores can only enhance your application. It cannot negatively impact your application. And then we do have the Oregon guarantee. The Oregon guarantee means that your tuition is fixed and will not rise through the completion of your degree or up to five years of education. So it is our commitment to you to be able to financially plan for college. We also offer a wide variety of scholarships, including three different merit-based scholarships that are automatic consideration as soon as you apply to the U of O. So thank you so much for taking the time to learn a little bit more about the University of Oregon. I am gonna place my contact information in the chat and do not hesitate to reach out to me for any reason. All right, thank you. Next up we have Willamette University. Thank you so much, Christy. Let me share my screen. All right. Awesome, well, thanks everyone. Uh, my name is Kaylin Kappas. Welcome to Willamette University, um, and I'm an admission counselor here. Today, we are going to take the next six minutes to talk a little bit about Willamette's story and introduce you to just a few things that make us unique. Um, my hope is that in these few minutes, we'll inspire you to want to spend more time with us in a more depth, in-depth experience like in person or through a virtual visit. Willamette is located in Salem, Oregon, the state capital, in the heart of the beautiful Willamette Valley. We're a liberal arts college supported by graduate programs in business, law, theology, and fine arts. We're located in a part of the country that's sought after for its natural beauty, diverse ecosystems, outdoor opportunities, and many places to explore. 
Willamette is actually the most historic in university in the entire Western United States. And it was founded before Oregon was even a state at all. Willamette began to educate and shape innovative leaders right from the beginning, including our very first graduate, Emily York. As things like business, government, education, medicine, and social systems were being established in the American West, it was Willamette alumni who were equipped with an education that allowed them to quickly make an impact as these industries literally grew up around us. I mentioned our history because it's important to understand Willamette's rich heritage in order to understand who we are as an institution now. Willamette's current legacy of leadership and impact in the community is exactly what current Willamette students find here today. We're a place that takes knowledge and turns it into action. Our predecessors gave us a motto that inform, informs the current Willamette experience in a very real way. The motto that was established at our founding is, not unto ourselves alone are we born. You can see it there on the screen in Latin. Our motto sums up what those early alumni knew from their time at Willamette. We're in a world together, and our education should be a time when we practice and explore how we'll have an impact on others. We talk about the motto a lot and continue challenge, to challenge ourselves uh, to live it in new and varied ways. Willamette does an exceptional job of providing students with occasions, both in and outside the classroom, to practice the idea of this motto, of making positive change through leadership, service, and innovation. In the classroom, Willamette students meet in small groups where highly engaged faculty lead primarily discussion-based classes. These small groups are interactive and designed to help students develop the important skills that will see them through their lives and careers. Skills like critical thinking, creative problem solving, and the ability to consider varied perspectives. Our faculty are accomplished academics. They research, write, and publish extensively. But first and foremost, they're teachers. Willamette faculty serve as mentors who help our students really learn to learn so they can grow and change as the world around them changes. It's no wonder that Willamette has more Oregon State Professor of the Year awards than any other college in the state by quite a margin. We feel really strongly that the incredible classroom environment at Willamette is critically supported by an experiential and co-curricular activity experience. Things like study abroad, hands-on research, and internships are interactive outside of class experiences that every Willamette student participates in. Our unique location contributes significantly to these types of experiences. So let me tell you a little bit more about our place in this world. We're an urban campus set in the center of Salem's quaint downtown corridor. And we're on the only campus in the nation that sits directly across from the state capitol, 76 feet to be exact. You can imagine the internship and research opportunities that abound for our students in everything from politics to economics to psychology and data science, simply because of our proximity to and long relationship with state government. Also unique to our location is the positioning of Salem Health, one of Oregon's largest hospitals, which is directly adjacent to our campus. Our thriving pre-med program is well supported by our proximity to this medical resource. Willamette also owns a 305-acre outdoor learning laboratory called Xena, where students can literally dig in the dirt in this unique region, restoring habitats, participating in forestry study, and even growing vegetables. Finally, Willamette is co-located with Tokyo International University of America. The American Studies program brings up to 100 Japanese students to live and learn with us in Salem every year. And this program is a great reminder of Willamette's strong commitment to all things international. We value the experiences uh, that experiential learning brings and that the exchange students bring to our campus, as well as all the amazing opportunities that students find when participating in our other 66 possible uh, study abroad opportunities. As you can see, Willamette is physically located in such a way that we are literally surrounded by different opportunities for our students to extend their learning far beyond campus. And here's some more pictures of some of those um, amazing opportunities, which is so fun to look at. There's really so much more to say, but before my time is up, I just want to mention that Willamette does use the common application. We review our applications holistically, and we've been fully test optional for several years now. We never ever charge a fee to apply because we don't want to be a barrier for any student seeking Willamette, and every applicant is considered for our generous financial aid awards. Additionally, this year, any student who applies early action or early decision will receive a renewable $1,000 scholarship. So get those applications in. 
Willamette encourages applications from bright, diverse, prepared students who want to make an impact and interact with challenging ideas. If you want to be a part of the deep tradition and history that have made Willamette uh, shapers and innovative leaders around our community, I hope you take some time to learn a little bit more about us. You can visit our website to explore our extensive virtual visit opportunities, as well as our current in-person visit opportunities. And any student who lives outside of Oregon and Washington will be completely reimbursed for travel costs when visiting Willamette up to $400. So we'd love to see you on campus or don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, directly via the website to learn more. Go Bearcats, and thanks so much for listening. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Western Washington University. All right. I think I got my screen up now. How's it going, everyone? My name is Brent Bodie. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Western Washington University. Um, thank you for joining us all today. I realize that I am the black sheep um, out of the group with all of my Oregon colleagues, but i um, happy to be here and representing um, the even more Northwest of the Pacific Northwest. Um, so I've got a few minutes here to chat through uh, some of the major points about Western. Hopefully it'll pique your interest just enough to reach out and wanna chat a little bit more. Uh, Western Washington University, we're a mid-size public institution in Washington State. We are located in the very northwest corner of Washington, um, pretty much as far north as you can go before you hit Canada. Um, it's about an hour and a half north of Seattle. Um, we're about an hour south of Vancouver, BC, depending on what the border weight looks like. Um, it's only about 15 minutes to actually get to the Peace Arch Crossing, which is um, the second most traveled uh, land crossing into Canada. Um, we are located on the Puget Sound, so it's about um, a five to 10 minute walk to get to the waterfront. Um, our downtown is located on only about a 10 minute walk away as well. Uh, Mount Baker is our local ski and snowboarding mountain, um, as well as our access to the North Cascades, um, and all the beauty that is around us out there. Western is primarily an undergraduate institution, so that really is who you see walking across campus over 95% of our students. Um, are pursuing their first degree. Um, on average, our class size is also under 30 students. Um, we definitely like to keep that focus on the classroom experience. Um, the bigger part for me, I think that really makes an impact is the 99% of our classes being taught by professors. Uh, really outside of English 101, students always have um, their full-fledged professor speaking in front of them, hosting their office hours, really being a resource for the students. Um, our professors are hired with the intention that they are going to be teaching the students um, that is part of the process for them um, and their onboarding is that they have that continued training um, for uh, teaching and for being there and being part of our, our campus community. So a little bit different than Oregon. Um, we're about a four and a half hour drive away from Portland. So if you are thinking of going to the Northwest, we're just a little bit farther up. Bellingham does have its own airport as well. Um, we have flights with both Alaska Airlines and Allegiant. Um, they fly into um, Oakland, San Francisco, San Diego, LA, really anywhere in California that you can think of. Um, and Southwest will also begin operating into Bellingham um, starting in November. Full disclosure, I'm also originally from California and from the Bay Area myself. And I can tell you my mother is thrilled that Southwest um, will have a connection between Oakland and Bellingham. So I have a feeling I'm going to get to see her even more. Uh, a little bit about academics and student life on campus. We do have over 175 majors on campus. All of our students coming in for their first year come in as undecided, um, unless you're applying into our interdisciplinary studies program called Fairhaven College. Um, otherwise, all our students come in and start working on their general requirement classes, things like math and English and science and social science and things like that. Um, we want students to explore, we want them to try some different topics, um, work on, on checking out different programs before you really settle in and actually apply into a specific major. Uh, like I said before, I've got about 16,000 students. Um, and with that many students also comes all the clubs and organizations that we have. Um, there are over 250 different clubs, organizations. They range from being academic-based, social, outdoor-based, uh, religious-based, you name it, there's gonna be something out there for you. Um, so our students are definitely active. They like having things to do. We are in the Pacific Northwest. It does rain quite a bit. Um, so having those activities and those connections um, with students across the board um, is really where our students find that success and find that kind of camaraderie 
um, even if there is kind of a more overcast day um, as we do get uh, pretty used to having around, around us. In terms of our application, um, we have two different applications. You can either fill out the application on our website um, that's specific to us. We'll also be on the coalition application starting next month. Um, the one on our website is available at this time. So if you're a senior, you can start working on your application at this point. We do have two deadlines. We have an early action application deadline of November 1st or our regular decision deadline, which is January 31st. Um, as Loretta said earlier, um, with early action, what that means is it's non-binding, so you still have until that May 1st confirmation deadline, um, whether you've applied early action or regular, dis regular decision, excuse me. Um, for our application, we do require both the application itself, essay, and activities list, as well as your transcript from high school. Um, all of that can be loaded into the application itself uh, with no issue for being reviewed that way. We are a WUI school as well. Um, unfortunately, it's not offered to every single student who applies. It is a merit-based scholarship. So you go through the review process after you've been admitted to the university. Typically the top 10% of our out-of-state applicant pool from WUI states um, will receive that scholarship. It does shake out to being about $14,000 a year. Uh, we do have multiple levels of out-of-state scholarships that students are automatically reviewed for. So there's nothing separate that you need to do. Um, just ensure that you've applied on time and you would automatically be considered for all of those non-resident scholarships that we have. Um, additionally, on the slide that you can see here is a breakdown from um, the past year, what those costs look like um, as an out-of-state student. Um, and any of those scholarships you have would immediately reduce what that tuition cost is going to be. Outside of that, um, I'm doing real good on time. I've got my 20 seconds. Um, again, my name is Brent Bodie. I work with all students coming from California and Nevada, so please feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions. I'm happy to chit chat about anything. Hopefully we piqued your interest a little bit um, and maybe I can pull you away from Oregon if they were the ones um, that you tuned in today. So uh, thanks for joining us. All right, if I could have everyone uh, come back on screen, we don't have a whole bunch of time, but we can go pretty quickly through here. The same order that we presented, if you could tell us what advice you would give someone going through the college search process, starting with Portland State University. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is to just keep your mind open to, to the different schools that you're considering. Uh, I think sometimes you know, we're saying, oh, well, my friends are going here, my, my family wants me to go here, but at the end of the day, what is the right choice for you as an individual? And again, if you're able to go physically visit campuses, great. Otherwise, virtual visits are a good thing to do as well. I think you're going to find most of us are going to agree with David's statement that it's, it's about finding the good fit. What size school, what location, how are the academic programs? Uh, the visit is invaluable because you're going to be able to get that all elusive uh, quote, feel when you visit. And, uh, uh, you know, when you're in an area, go visit multiple schools that are very, very different, like Portland State and Portland. Courtney? Yeah, I'm just going to piggyback off what they were saying. As far as the campus visit, that was the main piece of advice I wanted to give is make sure you come visit. Um, you really get a feel for it when you're on the actual campus, um, as opposed to all the information you can find online or in these virtual formats. So um, visit if possible. And Southern Oregon University is doing in-person visits. I would um, really, I would say that um, utilize admissions counselors as a resource. I, we're not scary. We're actually your biggest advocates throughout the admissions process, and we want nothing more but to say yes to our students. So if you have questions or if something's unclear or you need a little help navigating a certain portion of the application, contact us. Um, we're, that's what we're here for. We're here to alleviate some of that stress. I'd say really think about what you love and don't like so much about your high school experience now. Do you love being in big classes or small classes? Do you like being around a lot of people? Is it helpful when you're able to access teachers really easily or do things that are more hands-on? Think about all that stuff when you're considering um, what colleges you might want to apply to and definitely try to visit, um, especially since Willamette's going to reimburse you. Hooray! <laughs> For me, I would also say be sure that you're exploring uh, around campus too. Um, so not just the college or the university itself, but 
Is it a college town? Is it in an urban environment? And what is that environment like? Is that something that you want to participate in, be surrounded by? Um, is that something that feels like it's going to be fun for you? Um, I, you know, I, I've met plenty of students who are like, well, I'm never going to leave campus all four years. And the reality is you're going to leave campus quite a bit. Um, and odds are you'll probably move off campus depending on where you're going. Um, so knowing what that surrounding area is like is also really important. Um, it's also part of the fun is to know where you're going to be. It's where you're going to live. Um, it's going to be who you're surrounded by. Uh, so be sure to take part of that too. It's not just the campus tour, but tour yourself out into the community around the, the school as well. All right, awesome advice from uh, all our panelists, our experts. Uh, I always try to plug something, but of course, it always gets covered. The biggest thing for me is reach out to these folks. They are the experts. Uh, they know a lot about uh, the institution they work for, and they also know a lot about each other as well. They're trying to find the right fit for you. So please uh, jot down their contact information. Thank you so much for being here if you were here with us live. Thank you so much for watching this recording if you're watching. Uh, as you leave here, if you are here, there is a quick survey for you to complete. Uh, there is no more sessions tonight, but there are going to be more in the future. And a recording of this and all of the different sessions are at the StriveScan website. And I put that in the chat as well. So thank you one last time to our experts, to our panelists for giving us their evening and, and sharing. And thank you to all of those out there who are watching and best of luck to you. Have a good night. <laughs>